Hey guys, 420 seeing here, back at it again with another video. I hope everyone watching is having themselves a super stony day, Snapchat inbound. Let me know what you're talking on and where you watch the video from. I always like to know. Be sure to drop a like, subscribe, and if you want access to all my secret, unlisted Grow and Smoke videos, our VIP Discord community, or if you want to get some one-on-one -on -one grow help, totally check us out on Patreon. I'm going to have the link in the upper right-hand corner over here. Today we're going to be talking about not only just increasing your yield, but getting the best quality flowers you possibly can so you can get more out of the time that you invested in your grow. Now these are going to be my ways that I think you're going to get a bigger yield and better quality flowers based on my own experiences because I've run different setups and I've run with a lot of different equipment over the years. So here's what I think is going to give you a bigger yield and better quality flowers. Tip number eight, run with a bigger container size or container sizes if you're running with multiple ladies. Some people have told me that you don't get a bigger yield yield with a bigger container. I, I, I kind of scoffed at that, but I've done experiments where I've run one gallon, five gallon, and 10 gallon containers. And the 10 gallon containers always give me the biggest yield in my opinion. And it just makes sense because you're giving your roots more real estate to work with. That's why the old saying goes, bigger roots equal bigger fruits. I promise you it's not bullshit. So yes, the bigger container you have, the better you're going to be setting yourself for having a bigger yield. And I don't want to necessarily say that bigger containers is the can all be all like like that's going to be the one and only thing that's going to give you a bigger yield because it also depends on a lot of other things your environmental factors and your genetics and i mean there's a lot of other factors we're going to get over like we're going to talk about but if you're running with the same stuff with different container size like you're running the same everything you will most likely be getting a bigger yield from the bigger container sizes unless you're running autos then <laughs> they start flowering super early and then the fuck all with what i I just said. Tip number seven, pay attention to what's underneath. Meaning pay attention to your soil food web and your microbial activity because that's what's gonna really directly impact your harvest. Now, the soil food web, it's the heart and soul of your ladies. Like if you ever hear me talking about it, trust me, it's super important to pay attention to. It's how they get energy to grow. I mean, obviously photosynthesis, but I'm talking about the underneath, you know, that's how they are able to absorb the nutrients in order to grow. So essentially it's all about your soil health and if you're asking what are some really good recommendations on microbial inoculants mammoth is one really good my one shop guy he gave me a little bottle of mammoth and i tried it and i got excellent results so mammoth is at the top you know what i'm saying mycos is probably going to be without a doubt my next favorite along with mammoth great white and recharge are also great now mind you not all these microbial inoculants are going to be administered the same way so just make sure to do your research before you get all the different products that are out there and like for example mammoth you're going to mix in your water same as fish shit which is also another one that i didn't mention but i use it all the time like fish shit is i mean awesome you know what i'm saying recharge is another popular one by real growers i like using that as well i use that maybe once every three weeks or so for my run like during the veg and then the flowering stage it's pretty much a bare bones compost tea mix with molasses kelp you got some microbes in there but mycos is a little bit different you spread that on your root ball or your initial mix so like mycos it's administered the same way you would with organic nutrients like down the earth or gaia green so just make sure to do your research on how to administer all the different microbial stuff and I could also make a video about all the different microbial inoculants and break down everything about them so if you want me to make that video just type in microbes in the comment section below tip number six bigger lights with a higher output is going to give you a bigger yield than a smaller light I mean you know of course there are other variables involved but like if everything's the same except the light expect to get a much bigger return on a light that's more intense no I'm not telling you to get your lights super close to your ladies because that's not the point trust me light stress is real it is a thing i've always gotten a bigger yield on a bigger light than a smaller one for example the ks5000 by viper spectra i had two i gave one of them away for a giveaway but that's 500 watts and i used it in a couple runs ago i think it was the mandarin cookies run and i always got a bigger yield on the higher intense lights as opposed to the lower intense lights like a 250 300 watt see there's a difference between having a more intense light and moving your ladies up to 
increase the light intensity. Well, it's not the same thing. And I know this tip is more of like a no-brainer, but I still wanted to mention it in the video for any beginners out there that you might be, you know, wondering, well, maybe I should get a 250 watt light. Well, may is there a difference between a 500 and 300 watt light? Exactly why I threw this tip in the video. Tip number five is to learn to use bloom boosters the right way. And I see it all the time from beginners looking at the NPK ratios and automatically thinking that, oh, I'm gonna keep pumping that shit into my ladies every single week. You're gonna get the biggest flowers. Not only that, you're gonna end up on the cover of High Times Magazine with your picture taken with Kyle Cushman holding up a cup trophy. But guys, uh, let me kind of reel you in, pull you back in the real world, bruh. Trust me, okay, I was one of those people when I started. I thought, I, yeah, the highest NPK ratio, that is exactly what's, I'm, okay, maybe not all of that, but I thought, you know, you get the highest NBK ratio, that's gonna be the best. Snapchat inbound again. But that's not the case, you know what I mean? Like, in my opinion, the best way to use a bloom booster is to use it during a transitional period. I'm gonna break this fucking phone. We done? As I was saying before I got really interrupted, you wanna use it in a transitional period, like as long as you're within four to six weeks, like in between your top dresses. So let's just say for example, so let's just say for example, you're vegging for eight weeks and then you're going to flip into flowering and then you're going to top dress. All right, so those first four weeks, you're gonna be covered because you're gonna be using the organic amendments. Now, assuming you are using the organic amendments just because that's the way I do it. After that, so after week four, you're gonna have to top dress again, but it's gonna take about a week for it to break down. That is what I'm talking about. That transitional period, that like five to seven day window, whatever it is, I don't know, maybe five to 10 day window, you know what I'm saying. During that transitional period, so that way you can keep maintaining your phosphorus and potassium values until the next top dress that's gonna be broken down already. So that's what I mean by using the bloom booster during the transitional period. And like I said, make sure it's between week four, five, or six of flowering because those are the flowering stacking or flower building weeks. So that's why I say between weeks four through week six. Any other time, and it's not really, I don't see it really a point in using a bloom booster or maybe week seven of flowering if you're running some sativas with a super long flowering time. Also, if you plan on using synthetic or if you're trying to grow hydro, make sure to grab a PPM meter so you can lock in how much newts you can give your lady so you don't go overboard. It's always good to have a visual point of reference. Tip number four, make sure to implement side lighting now of course like I said, tip number four is gonna to be to implement side lighting. Now, if you're running in a tent, this isn't really geared towards you just because you have that reflective mylar material, but it still doesn't hurt to add a little bit of side lighting in there as well. Like for example, AC Infinity, they sell some low intense LED strips. It's similar to the ones that you'd find in the germ kits. And what you can do is you can attach them to the walls of your tent. Now, granted, you'll probably have some really nice flowers like on your upper heads, but your mid tier heads, that's the important part. That's why you're gonna be implementing the side lighting, they're gonna start looking just as developed as, you know, the top tier cold. So, so yes, yeah, side lighting is totally gonna increase your yield on the mid-tier flowers. Tip number three, if you wanna get some high quality dank, airflow is super key. Not even while you're doing a run, but like when you're drying. And I recommend always getting an oscillating fan. I don't care if it's one of the old school fans. I don't care if it's a tower fan. As long as it's moving left or right, that's all I give a shit about. So that way you can get really good air distribution all across the board. Tip number two, this one is really easy and I don't wanna spend too much time with it because I feel like a lot of other people mention this as well and it's all about your genetics like I've said this time and time again in a lot of my videos but if you want to get good quality stuff like I've of course, in most cases, you're gonna have to spend a little bit more to get really good quality beans. Now, I'm not saying that's always gonna be the case. You can get cheap beans that are really good just as well as you can spend a lot of money on beans and it not be as good, but more times than not, you get what you pay for. Tip number one, this one is super important, probably the most important one. I didn't intend for this to be number one. I was just kind of thinking and it just happens to be number one. And that's to invest your time and resources to your root zone. Get a heat mat with a probe like I do, like Vivo Sun. Like I got a Vivo Sun from Amazon and I got the heat mat with the Pro for, I don't remember how much it was. I think it might've been like 30 or $40, but trust me, it's an investment. You're gonna have it for pretty much a long time. And I think it's probably gonna be one of the biggest, like the best investments you'll ever make because I feel like a lot of people, they focus on the air environment, but not really the root zone environment. You know, I recommend keeping the soil between 70 and 78 degrees. And I'm not only talking about seedlings, I'm talking about during the veg stage and 
and the flowering stages. Now, unless you're doing the final flush, then it doesn't really matter. But I mean, at that point, you're towards the tail end of your grow anyway, so it doesn't matter by then. But for almost the entire run, make sure to keep your roots sitting at 70 to 78 degrees, super important. Just because your air temperature is good, that doesn't always mean that your root zone temperature is gonna be good, especially in the winter time, like right now. So those are my tips for you guys, so you can not only get the biggest possible yield, but the best quality from your yield. And I know that quality is more important than quantity, but I mean, if you can have both, why not have both, right? So follow all those tips and you should be on your way into having a really successful run. If there are any other questions that you might have or topics, you know, you want me to talk about something else, be sure to drop that in the comment section and let me know what you want me to make a video on. But here, the little disclaimer here, there's always a disclaimer somewhere, right? I know, I know. Be sure to put in the word topic before the video idea so I know that's what you want me to make a video on. So before we close off today's video, I want to thank everyone on screen who's been supporting us on Patreon. I really appreciate the love and support and to everyone else, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. And as always, stay safe. Peace.